Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest news on our water infrastructure. As water companies say they need to increase our bills by, in some cases, almost double to pay for the modernisation that we were promised back in 1989 when the government privatised the industry. Now, just to begin with here, there are, I mean, there are lots of arguments and counter arguments flying around. I don't want to fall into the trap of making something complex sound simple, but I'm going to say this. When people argue that water companies did not load up their debt to pay dividends in terms of the balance sheets, that may be true. But it is also true to say water companies have loaded up lots of debt. That debt was supposed to be for investment. They have been making huge profits. They haven't been investing as they were supposed to. For example, off what? The regulator. They define investment as follows. And this is a direct quote. Investment is spending by companies on new reservoirs, treatment plants and pipes. So since 1989, our privatised water industry has only built technically one new reservoir. But that was in 1992, just after privatisation. So that was probably planned while water was still in government hands. So private water companies themselves have never actually built a new reservoir as far as I can tell. So that's one form of investment as defined by off what that they failed to provide. And also, you know, the number of leaks we have as well. It has been a problem for many years. And that also suggests they're not being invested in pipes properly. So it's only the water treatment plants I could really say, well, maybe I can't find any evidence they haven't built them. But at the same time, given that they're not treating very much water these days, it certainly seems likely they're not using them properly either. So the three types of, of investment that off what say is investment seems to be lacking in all cases. It's also interesting to note that five years ago, there was an article published with views on the 30th anniversary of privatisation. And there were some views in favour and some against. And those in favour were citing the fact that water is now much cleaner than in the 80s. Oh, it's much better. I would say a couple of things to that. First of all, what you're doing is comparing the water industry being run by a conservative government and run by private companies. That is an indictment of conservative governments, not praise for privatised services. Secondly, I'd like to see someone argue that our water is now cleaner than in the past. Theresa Coffey tried it a while ago, was widely ridiculed. In fact, it's important to note what we're seeing now here is arguably what happens when you get a combination of majority conservative government and privatised water company. Five years ago, they were saying, oh, the water is much cleaner. What happened five years ago? What happened since? Our waters are now so polluted that boat races have to be called off. Where they do take place, the competitors end up in hospital. What happened? What happened, of course, is that the government passed legislation once we'd left the EU to make it cheaper for water companies to dump raw sewage than it was to treat it. So guess what they do? Now, some of the, the, the dumping is illegal, even with the Conservatives' legislation, some of it is actually illegal. But the government also allowed water companies to scale back the monitoring of outlets so they can hide a lot of it. So when you read about how much sewage was dumped last year, for example, that's only what was monitored. Basically, our water isn't, you know, isn't this polluted just because private water companies haven't modernised as promised. They hadn't modernised five years ago, but it wasn't this polluted. It's because the Tories changed their business model to reward polluting behaviour in, in pursuit of ever higher profits. Which is mad even for the Conservative Party, because this is hurting them politically in some of their strongholds. So without any other changes, things should certainly improve once Labour legislate for their water policies, because the main ones published on their website include, first of all, all outlets must be monitored, every single one, and, and that the industry doesn't get to self-monitor. You know, because at the moment, even when there is monitoring taking place, you get the water companies go, oh, yeah, we've got to monitor that. OK, can we see the data? Uh, we'll process the data and show it you later. So no, 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 no. The outlets will be checked independently. There'll be no hiding after this. Remember, some dumping is illegal. It's just covered up. So this policy ends that once it's implemented. Second, automatic fines for illegal discharges. 
Labour have said elsewhere that they'll take steps to make sure that the water companies don't just add the cost of the fines to customers' bills as well, because that's vital. So it will come out of their profits. Third, another little hit to their wallet, Offwatch will be empowered to block any bonus until water companies have cleaned up. You know, in that article from a few years ago, John McDonnell, Shadow Chancellor at the time, who was not speaking in favour of uh, privatisation, sorry, uh, was pointing out how one executive was paid a bonus of £2 million in a year where the company uh, were committing so many breaches that they ended up being fined £20 million for illegal dumping. And this was when the problem wasn't that bad. This will not be occurring in a few years' time. And fourth, that where repeated breaches of the law take place, water bosses will be facing criminal charges. So I am personally looking forward to a sudden change in behaviour and then a select committee of MPs, a few years down the line, asking water company executives, oh, what happened? We seem to have had a sudden change around. What's, what's boosted your performance? Why wasn't this possible a few years earlier? Because at the moment, they say, oh, it's all this Victorian infrastructure, it's terrible. Yeah, you were supposed to have replaced that 35 years ago. You know, I, I'm looking forward to this select committee hearing. However, none of this means that we don't need modernised infrastructure either. We do. The question is, are there different options? You know, the fact of the matter is, £100 billion worth of investment has been identified and it needs paying for. The water companies don't actually have the money to do it. They didn't hoard their profits like a dragon does gold. They just gave it away. The money needs raising, but what are the options for raising it? Because the way it's been presented in the news is this is what's going to happen, right? The water companies want bills to increase in order to fund the work. Oh, yeah, OK, we'll do this work. All right, we will do it, but we'll need paid for it. We'll have to put up the bills because we don't want to like, affect our profits. One water company, Southern Water, has said they'll need to increase bills by 91%, almost double. Now, consider what the public are being asked to swallow here. Cost of living crisis, right? Their water bill doubles in order for what? What's they're getting for this doubling of water, uh, water bills? Infrastructure that their privatised water company failed to properly fund 35 years ago whilst managing to make profits of up to £170 million a year. And... It's not just that the public are being asked to go, you know, it's not just like the watch comes and go, oh, sorry, yeah, we should have done this before we did. We'll do it now, though. Just give us the money. We're trusting them that they'll still use the money, this doubling of bills, that they will still use that to deliver the infrastructure they were supposed to do before. And in terms of the politics, could be tricky. It seems to me, just as with so many other things, the Conservatives are kicking decisions into the long grass for Labour. You know, there's lots of there's been lots of talk about what to do, what to do. I don't think a decision is going to be made this side of the election, which means that when Labour form a government, they're the ones who are going to have to deal with this. I'm not sure that they want the media to be full of articles of their first act in government being allowing failing private water companies to increase bills during a cost of living crisis in order to pay for something they should have done years ago. There has to be a better way. I wondered if there's perhaps some way of making the water companies fund the work. So instead of putting the bills up for customers, maybe loans from the government instead. So effectively it comes from borrowing, uh, but there's some arrangement for water companies, they'll have to pay it back out of their profits. Now, I don't know if this is feasible. It sounds like, oh yeah, that's the obvious thing to do. I can imagine a few potential issues. But the way I see it is, if water companies have to start operating like a proper business, they'll find themselves way less profitable anyway. They cannot just get away, because they have a monopoly. Remember, you know, privatisation, I suppose, oh, it brings the spirit of competition. There is no competition for water. Your water company, you don't choose it. It's determined by where you live, right? And that's the case with so many of our utilities. There is no competition. Now, they cannot just get away with banging up the price. They cannot do that. So we have to find another way. You know, I mean, and, and as I say, it, they, need to, they need to be told, no, you're going to have to run this like a proper business. We have to take account of the fact that in reality, it's a monopoly. And then get to the point where it's just not worthwhile. The state has to take over anyway. Because one of the reasons that I really liked Labour's policies on, on water companies, the moment I saw them, which was a very long time ago, it makes things very uncomfortable. It especially makes things impossible for the sort of investors who've been used to 
investing in water companies it's basically a license to print money now something like that means that the water companies will therefore be way less profitable maybe to the point where it's inevitably has to lead to nationalization obviously i also don't want the government taking on those debts uh, or just in terms of other things as well. Labour don't want to do it too quickly. They were asked earlier, was it earlier this year? I think it was earlier this year when Thames Water were again, you know, looking like they were close to going to the wall. And Labour made the point that to nationalise them would mean passing lots of legislation. That takes up lots of parliamentary time. They have to prioritise legislation which is going to have a more immediate impact because this wouldn't be felt, the benefits wouldn't be felt for many years. Uh, and from the point of view of most voters, they don't care whether water is nationalised or privatised as long as it does what it's supposed to do without costing a fortune. The reason why more people are in favour of nationalisation now than they were at the start of this process, which is the other way around, is because they've seen that actually the service degraded and the costs went up in real terms as well. But surely Labour have to come up with some way to manage this issue of, of investment, which doesn't make it look like the straight into power and then straight away oh yeah sorry your bills are gonna to have to basically double you know because we're letting water companies just charge the public more again it's 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 not easy to find alternatives i've yet to read an actual alternative that has a plan behind it but they're more i don't think labor can really come in and say yeah we're gonna to have to let these bills double uh it's not your fault you'll be paying more it's their fault uh but they're going to get away with it but there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.